Hi everybody, uh, my name's uh, Dave Wilson, I'm the CRO, CFO of uh, GBG or GB Group. Um, actually, if you just go back the slide really, rather than the disclaimer. So, um, uh, I hope, thank you for, for listening in and uh, hope yourself, your family, friends are safe and well. And for information, my uh, contact details are uh, on the last slide uh, when you get them. So, uh, if you could move on two slides, please, to the next one. Thank you. Um, just to scale um, uh, GBG, it's a later slide, but, but they're into, intermixed with uh, slides on uh, existing shelters and, uh, and uh, potential new shelters. So, GBG. Um, is uh, it's got a thousand and fifty people across sixteen countries, and ninety one percent of our team members say uh, we're a great place to work. Uh, we've got just over twenty thousand customers across seventy countries, and the largest customers um, less than two percent of our revenues. We've also got about twenty customers over a million pounds sterling per annum. So we're pretty diversified as a customer uh, base, and we've had our best uh, advocacy scores uh, um, in the last year. Uh, financially, we're just shy of 200 million sterling turnover and uh, just short 48 million profit. Um, and we've got a good cash diversion, uh, diversion conversion uh, metric. So over 95% of our EBITDA converts to cash. Um, I've been with the company uh, 11 years and uh, when I joined the market cap was like 17 million and it's now 1.3 billion. So we've scaled the business really well. It's still really early stage in the markets and uh, the market is a massive, it's in the billions of dollars uh, opportunity. Um, and also we're, we're both an organic and inorganic um, growth strategy. Um, so just moving on to the current slide, which is really what we do, is that we um, help build trust online. And we do that by helping our customers to a B2C organization simply, safely, and securely onboard and interact with their consumers. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, we've got access to uh, a very broad and deep data sets globally and we give responses or answers in, in milliseconds. Our proprietary technology is constantly, well, we're constantly investing in, it's evolving, and I guess our, um, call it secret source, is that we are software layers data and triangulates data, and it does that, um, uh, as I said before, really quickly. Uh, we're able to provide um, Three different solutions, a, a, a location service, a little bit later, identity and fraud. And um, we do that across multiple marketplaces um, and also, uh, as I talked about earlier, many geographies. So if you could just move to the next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, our, our business model really is that we've got um, three platforms that we are interconnecting, and they are our location platform, it's about 50 million of revenue, our identity platform, it's about 105 million, and our fraud platform, it's about 36 million. Uh, our approach to market is uh, multi channel go to market. Uh, the majority of those um, is a direct, I would say in the past, face to face, but it's virtual at the moment. Um, over the phone selling and also uh, virtual um, selling. We've also got a self-service capability, it's about 15 to 20% of ours where the developers and marketers can download the software, um, trial it, um, pay us, and then um, uh, it's working. Uh, and then the, the, um, the channel is, you know, we, we 
some of our larger channel partners are people like uh, IBM in the US, um, Oracle, uh, and quite a few UK and uh, Asia channel uh, partners. So we just move on to the next slide, please. So um, obviously, what uh, it's a massive marketplace, a very popular. Um, you know, as I say, it's in the billions. It's it's relatively early stage, and, and there's a very long um, run, runway. So we've scaled ourselves quite well. You know, but we're we're still uh, relatively youthful in the progressing of the um, the market opportunity. So the key barriers. Um, uh, uh, are that we have global data access. What that means is that we can verify over half the global population to know your customer anti-money laundering uh, standards. We've also got the residential address in all of the countries in the world, but we've got the best residential address record across 60 countries. Uh, so, why is, so why is the address important? Well, address is a key component of somebody's, you know, identity, and our competitor in that that space is uh, Google Maps, and Google Maps have addresses at street level, not residential or apartment or where the apartment sits within, you know, a um, uh, a multi-story building. Uh, our technology is cloud enabled. Uh, it's platform based. And it's really easy to use and easy for the, uh, the our customer who are the B2C organizations to consume. And I said a bit about uh, why the technology is good is that it gives answers really quickly. So a user case would be um, somebody setting up a bank account online. Uh, the answer is, is uh, without doing a, a, a photographic check is, you know, sub a second. Uh, we can verify Chinese citizens outside of China. We can um, we help age verify people that, to prove they're over the, the age of 18 in you know uh, um, 0.2 of a second. So it, it works really fast, and we're, we're constantly aggregating and increasing the the data sets that we access globally. The third, which is generally the probably the most uh, underused, but not underused, but underrated, but from ours, it's the most important um, barrier to entry or uh, differentiation is our people. And uh, we believe in having the, the best and most engaged um, people in the marketplace. We've got a very open structure. And as I've previously discussed, our last engagement score was 91% of our 1,050 people said we're a great place to work. And we're always looking to improve how we um, help our people and um, in return they can help our customers and our customers can you know can help uh, our business so if you turn on to the um, the next slide please um, actually if we we skip this one and just move over to the uh, the covid slide which is probably because I've, I've covered quite a lot of the information on uh, that's right so we're on the COVID side now so um, obviously in the um uh, the current em environment the um the fact that we're, we're geographically uh dispersed uh we were aware of the the challenge with covid uh we've got uh, locations in china beijing and shanghai so that that we felt early in january and um our key priority is to ensure that our team members are um, safe. Uh, fortunately, we've had uh, some team members, uh, members that have been uh, recovered safely from the uh, um, uh, COVID. Uh, unfortunately, they've they, they lost some of their um, family members. So uh, it sort of brings things into uh, perspective. So just bring it on to the uh, the business um, side is that when we uh, started working from home, um, actually if you just flip back to the the previous slide, I'll probably stay on uh, on this one. 
Uh, we've not missed a beat. Um, we, our service levels and our product releases have been um, uh, great. Uh, it helps being a, a digital company in that respect. So, you know, that's more, it, it's easier for us to, to do that than many other um, companies. We, um, from mid-March, we have um, assessments of all of our customers, the volumes going through on our retail customers, our financial services customers on a daily basis, and we're looking at those uh, week in, week out. So we know the movement from when COVID struck the, uh, the West more than, uh, more than the East, you know, from mid-March onwards. So we took the, the decision, hard decisions early March to cash conserve, um, and um, we, you know we um, stopped paying um, uh, accept bonuses, bonuses, and stop salary increments, um, with a view to uh, making sure that uh, we um, conserve our profit, which in turn you know generates cash. So we've just finished uh, Q1, uh, uh, and Q1 has been uh, significantly better than we expected. So you know that's a, that's a good sign. Uh, we um, are very conscious, uh, Chris myself in the in the business. We're, we're quite bearish on, on things. We uh, we look at the, uh, the the worst or execute or drive for the best. Um, and um, so Q1's gone. Got, uh, gone really well. And um, sorry, Q1 is our April to June, so um, less than expected. We do, we diversified by sector and um, geography, as I've talked about. Um, however, in our in our sector um, split, we've got 18% that are more fragile. So it includes uh, gambling companies, travel companies, uh, charities, and employment. Um, and the uh, the position on that, those are initially in in, in March, April, our, our, our first month in April, they were hit quite hard. What we found is the gambling companies are coming back uh, online, uh, not online, uh, with high volumes because you know there's more online sports happening now. Travel last week just started to pick up, and uh, we've seen with our um, pre-employment screening with coaches and so we do criminal record checking for them uh, that's just starting to come back as well so um the the rest of our um, um sectors include uh, e-tailers uh, and, and and particularly in the us they've done extremely well uh, and also 45 percent of our businesses with um uh, financial services uh, and they include, you know, the retail banks globally, lot in Asia Pacific, lot in Europe, uh, payment services providers. Um, Wirecard's not a customer of the world, by the way. Um, also, digital exchanges, cryptocurrency exchanges, and uh, forex exchanges. So they're all customers of ours. So we've got quite a spread of our um, sector by uh, by geography. Um, and just to try and give you a uh, geographic um, lens, uh, we um, three territories form you know uh, 80 80 percent of our business. UK is 46 percent. US is in the high 20s, and then Australia, New Zealand, the, the low teens. Um, and we've got nine other countries that are. Um, between one and three percent, and they include, you know, China, Indonesia, um, you know, in, uh, in Asia Pacific, Germany, and Europe, and, and so on. So we're pretty well uh, diversified. Um, geographically, we found uh, uh, the U.S. has performed in the first quarter uh, really well. Um, we, we're growing out organically in there, and we bought a business there in. Uh, February 19, and we've been aided in that, that business by um, uh, we're doing verification checks for the US government loan distribution to small to medium enterprises. Uh, in, in the UK and Europe, uh, we've seen a, a, a lowering of, uh, of volumes um, initially, you know, due to the 
that are the more fragile sectors that we uh, we service and we, it's just uh, over the past couple of weeks that's just showing uh, some um, sign of recovery and um, in Asia Pacific it's really country by country uh, and if you take the you know the recent uh, examples of that within um, Beijing in particular you know we're in lockdown in February uh, we went back into the offices there in um, um, in uh, June and then uh, we've come back out and been locked down again from July so it is you know the secondary waves are having impact on how people can you know uh, be in offices or not and, and in Melbourne Australia that's that's just coming to lockdown again for you know for um, uh, the next six weeks um, so so we can work digitally from our offices business development is harder but we're still working through that uh, well uh, some of our customers for our fraud solution requires on-premise on their side we can uh, deploy digitally and remotely but they need to be on premise within their firewalls um, so overall the covid position um, i think that um, um, uh, the analyst guidance on that are pretty conservative we are conservative and we always strive for the for the best on that uh, and if i can probably just move on a couple of slides um because i've jumped across just move on to not that one that uh, this one here if we just probably hold hold on that one um i guess in summary um that we're really proud of our record years for you know for uh, financial year 20 which ended in march 20 uh well that that seems you know uh year, years away at the moment um we are we've had increasing confidence in the long term and obviously with the short-term pandemic uh, challenges uh, you know there'll be bumps on the on the road on it and uh, we all know you know i don't want to say the obvious on this but we all know it's highly volatile and, and um you know we're operating in, in uncertain times we're well positioned because of our customer spread our sector spread and our geographic spread as well as having the ability for our people to you know to work from home and conduct business as well as they have been um from home so i'll, I'll keep to that there's a lot more uh, information in the presentation deck on um the financials and you know uh, who owns the business and um what each sector does and, and things like that or each business does uh, within it so here we are okay dave are you ready for your interrogation thank you for your um presentation um, and again apologies if um we kind of jump around from subject to subject and um, i'll just try and cover uh, questions as uh, as i've got them here um dividends and um, you mentioned the dividend have been suspended um so does that mean it's not cancelled could you talk around the, the the dividend history and in normal circumstances what the dividend policy is yes great question that so uh, the answer is uh yes it's suspended it's not cancelled um and we did that as a cash conservation uh, position uh as time moves on we'll continue to uh, to review it so an option is um paying it an option is continue to suspend it or pay a smaller amount and we haven't decided that we're going to wait till um september and we'll probably do a trading update at um towards the end of uh, uh october on that when we've got better visibility of, of what's coming through uh, prior to the suspension in the current year we were um increasing the dividend um, largely in line with our, our organic growth rate, which is 10 to 12 percent. So we've done increments of, you know, between 11 and uh, 14 percent from memory. And then once we're out of the COVID, however long that takes, we will reinstate the the dividend at the previous levels. So it's purely cash conservation uh, position, and um, we're sorry for having to do that, but it's important that we were in the you know the right position for um you know for when we come out of the current challenges 
Um, you explained that the company had gone from 17 million market cap, sorry, 17 million market cap to 1.3 billion in in your time there. But you still classified yourself as a, as a growth company, um, and that there's a lot of market to go for. So, what is uh, the market share that you have in the location ID and the fraud um, segments? Yeah, probably the, the the best way to answer that uh, because we, we uh, we've not. The markets are not joined up because we're selling to different parts of, of our customers on that. If I just scale the market, scale the growth in the market, and then give you our values. I know there's a lot of numbers in this, but our, our market, is, market share is relatively small. Yeah. So on the location, uh, we think the, the target addressable market, i.e. the number that we can reach, is about a billion dollars. And uh, we, we do about uh, 50 million. And that billion dollars is across uh, six countries. Um, and uh, the growth rate in that um, was scaled about three or four years ago. It's around uh, high single digits. We think we can do 10% more over time. Post COVID, I'll, I'll leave it on the, the medium term. Uh, the identity was scaled by um, McKinsey in 2018. They said it was a um, $10 billion marketplace. It's obviously a concentration of the, the large credit bureaus in that. And so we think our addressable part of that is around a billion and a half uh, globally. Uh, the growth rates on that are 7 to 15%. The 7 at the lower end is, is UK and US. Uh, and we've got about 105 million at the moment. And on the, uh, the fraud side, uh, there's, there's so many different stats on it, and there's so many, so fragmented the market. It, it's mid, um, uh, could call it five billion for argument's sake, and it's growing at mid teens percent, you know. And we've just got a, a small, you know, uh, 36 million in the marketplace. So the reason why I said we were early stage, and you know, the the, the, the market cap is just an external assessment of how much we're worth. Our revenues are still only 200 million, and they can be, you know, materially higher than than that over, over time. Thank you. A um, couple of questions uh, around um, gambling or online gaming. Um, the in the US, the, 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 there's some changing uh, legislation around online gaming gambling. Um, it seems to be that it's currently in favour. Um, do you have any uh, any of that market? Um, and then the second, which is, I guess, more maybe more domestic, um, do you support self-exclusion by problem gamblers? Is, is that something that your that clients can use your services for? Yeah, again, there's uh, some very informed, informed questions on, on there. The, the gambling in the, the US um, side, they call it sports betting uh, in the US, is being rolled out state by state. So we're, we're registered with... Um, four states in the in the US and uh, why the US are doing that is that to to be able to sports bet online you have to be um, physically located within that state so you, we've got to prove digitally that person is sitting in New Jersey which one of the states or Pennsylvania or Nevada where you're physically sitting in that state to gamble online so that will grow over time uh, our investors have asked us that probably about the past seven years uh, we, you know we uh, it's not counted any of the numbers if it happens we'll be delighted we probably we've got three or four channel partners in the us that, that service that and uh, we uh, uh, we probably did about three or four hundred thousand pounds last year so as it rolls out that will build um, so, but it's not, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, in terms of the uh, self-exclusion, um, we are uh, a massive advocate of that. We try to help the, the gambling um, regulators with software that could monitor and self-exclude. Um, and what we did, uh, and what we're currently doing is help, uh, first of all, we uh, we obviously very private. Some of these over the age of 18, that doesn't help individuals self-exclude. Um, but we are looking to see whether we can provide uh, the charities, not the charities committee, the gambling commission, 
um, some, some other metrics that can help encourage individual self-exclude, you know, like um, uh, frequencies, you know, if somebody's gambling a lot, can we uh, encourage our gambling uh, customers to communicate with that person just as a, you know, have you considered self-exclusion type approach, rather than a general thing on, on all adverts. So we're trying to make it specific to the person that is um, gambling when they do and um, help the businesses out and help the, uh, the market to just to try and reduce the consequences of that because, you know, when it happens, the, the consequences are horrible. You know, so uh, fully supported. Anything we can do that um, the various organisations are open to accept, we will do. Um, next question is about um, competitors, and I guess um, the on what basis people buy your solution versus a competitor solution. Some of the names you're up against, you know, if you're big, you know, Equifax is an experience here, Google's, you know, the people who offer on, on some level competing services. Is it typically, is there one thing that people buy on, on, on price? Is it accuracy, speed, so the, the holy grail of the three together? Um, and how price sensitive are customers? If, if, if you're, are you a bit cheaper, a bit more expensive? But maybe, how, how does that kind of matrix all work together, Dave? Okay, uh, well, I think, um, I think probably in my, in my short um, book that I, I didn't move into user cases. So I think on price, we're, we're not the cheapest. Uh, we're um, reassuringly expensive. Uh, we provide higher match rates, we find more fraud, um, so we provide a lot of good return on investments for our, for our customers. One reason why our pricing is, is generally higher is that the market that we're selling in on our location, it's, um, it reduces drop-off rates with the big customers you know, that we have like Wish.com, um, UK Sainsbury's, um, um nike adidas ebay and the, they're all you know because uh, we just reduce the the drop-off rate and we help minimize failed deliveries so so we make a big saving to those those customers so that's on the location side on the identity side the user cases are largely compliance led i touched on it uh, quickly in the um in the intro that we provide know your customer checks, KYC checks, and anti-money laundering checks for financial services. Um, but also we do age verification checks and high value goods. You know, uh, some of the big technology players that are based out of Ireland that ship product into Europe, we do a verification check for them. Um, and moving on to the competitive side, um, we, we, we generally don't class each other as competitors. Um, we, I used to use the phrase of co-opetition, but it's more frenemies, you know, we're friends and enemies. And as we get bigger, uh, uh, we're seen as more of a channel partner to Xperia and Equifax and TransUnion because we provide services into smaller businesses, smaller banks, and uh, some, some bigger ones, but generally, the areas that they're not focused on, they tend to be focused on much bigger organisations and uh, consumers, and we're a B2C company, not direct to consumer. So we're more of a channel to market with them. We know them really well at the, you know, the C uh, level, and um, you know we're quite a large customer of, of those organisations across multiple geographies. Thank you. Um... My final question then is going to be about M and A, um, and um, I'm sure there's you're, you're always looking at opportunities. Do do you think you're um, do do you tend to look to buy or would you buy for the technology, um, or do you, do, do you have any gaps in your 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 lineup that you'd like uh, to add to or or um, to, to to develop an existing proposition, or is it more for scale and revenue and, and customers, or both? So it's been quite a, a, a quick um, response today. It's definitely not scale. Uh, what we're looking for is because um, if you think about the, you know, the identity uh, uh, stolen identities or synthetic identities are um, bought 
and stolen on the dark web and people um the fraudsters the bad people bad actors are really good so we're always trying to keep keep up with trying to reduce um fraud by um helping with you know with, with identities um so we're always on, on the back foot on that the um our approach is to buy in technology where it's quicker than developing it and then uh, looking at geographies where we want to be in from a go-to-market perspective uh, and we've we have a pipeline of um, you know 70 businesses it's highly fragmented uh, and uh, in the current environment we're actively speaking myself chris the ceo and alex that works for me to probably about 10 or 15 businesses highly fragmented some really small ones um, uh, relative to, to ourselves that are early stage super technologies and then some some larger ones where we come back to, to the market for money uh, but just to, to recap on it we're, we're only buying technology we can add into our platforms and in geographies where we want to accelerate our growth lovely thank you very much indeed dave thank you um, and apologies we couldn't get the presentations to work um, and if there's any... sorry about yeah. it as well so and any, any lags in, in, in the slides, but um, I think that came across really clearly. So thank you very much indeed, Dave. We're going to turn your microphone. Um, Just and, say, uh, uh, stay safe, everyone, and thank you for listening. Sorry, Roland. Yeah. No, hey, you're welcome, and uh, th thank you very much.